Hi, it's Marie with Living Felt, and today we are wet felting hurricane or candle holders from wool. These make such a lovely room accent, would look so pretty on a mantle, great night lights for a child's room or a bathroom. We just love the ambiance that they add to a shelf or any room. Traditionally, hurricanes are made of glass to protect your candles from the wind, but making them out of wool creates this lovely glow that can be bright white or warm and cozy. If you've been wanting to learn how to wet felt over a resist or even wet felt over a jar or vase that you have at home, this is a perfect lesson for that. We're going to be using this bottle as the base around which we shape our final candle holder, but you could also use a glass jar like this. Supplies for this project are minimal and oh so easy. Choose a nice light or white colored wool. We are going to use our CX2 bright white and white viscose. About an ounce and a half of wool and just as much viscose as you want. Depending on the wool you choose, your fiber might shrink more or less. For our CX2, a 40% shrinkage is the right amount for this vessel. And we're gonna give you a worksheet that you can use to cal calculate the size you start for that shrinkage. This was made with our Merino top. It's going to shrink more and will make a smaller final shape. Here we have a selection of shapes that we made just for this tutorial as a very small example of wet felting over resist. So when you're making your little hurricanes, this is the this resist right here we used for making both of these shapes. The difference is this one was shrunk a little bit less. I used very similar fiber on both of these vessels, similar weight and the same exact fiber, but this one I shrunk more and cut taller and this one I shrunk less. So that's the main difference. In either case, shrink them a little bit smaller than the vessel so that you have to stretch them onto the vessel in the final blocking stage. This is a great example of what you can do when you want to uh, make sure that your fiber doesn't flare out. As we work on an open resist like this, Tapering the top can help the wool hug the resist, and you can even just taper the resist. So this little vessel was made with 19.5 micron merino, whereas these are much higher. So it shrunk more, but it was made on this resist. And you can see how the rounded bottoms really give us this space that we need here to set our vessel down. Both of these shapes were made over round resists like you would expect. This is Bergschaff and this is 19.5 micron merino. So two very different types of fiber, very fine and coarse. These are, these are both coarse as well. And the difference is just the shape that they were made over. In addition to the fiber for this project, we are using a basic single station wet felting setup. I'll be using about an inch and a half dowel for rolling, and this is our resist. You'll notice that the resist for this project is round on the bottom, and that's because we need the area to create a flat base on which our hurricane will stand. So we'll round that out. You'll see that in the worksheet. And we're also using an open resist, which means the resist is gonna extend further up than our wool will go. In laying out our fiber, I've divided my wool in half and you're just going to split the thickness of the bat. One will be for side A, one will be for side B. Then we split the thickness again so that we have two thin layers. We will start by laying out our fiber to cover this side A of the resist. And we're gonna start by concentrating a little extra fiber over the area that would be the base. 
Notice it should stick over about an inch and then make all the other fiber go horizontal or east to west up the length of the resist. Stop about four inches from the top. The second layer is going to run north and south. So look at your bat, notice the grain of the fiber. If you're working with merino top or sliver or roving, use the grain to go in two different directions. The most important thing is that you have nice even layers. So constantly pat, touch and press the bat to make sure that you're putting an equal amount of fiber in all areas. Go around and pinch off any excess. Mine looks kind of messy because the bats are pretty random, but it doesn't matter. Just go around and neaten up all the edges so that they stick over about an inch off of the resist. We are going to wet this layer. We add soap and water, pressing everything out, make it nice and flat. If you feel any bare spots here, then you would go back and add more fiber before switching to the other side. Press water and soap in and air out. We flip our project over and we're going to first wrap the wool over to this side. Make it hug the resist nice and tight. And I like to use my plastic or mesh, whatever you're using to do that. If you notice any thin areas, then just patch in a little piece of fiber and fill it in. Now we're on side B of the vessel. Remember to add a little extra patch of wool at the base and then do another full layer running your fibers with the grain running east to west. But this time we're not trying to stretch the fiber over the sides of the vessel. We have enough fiber sticking over. This is going to be a very thin project. So we just want to fill in the middle. And remember to add your last layer with the grain running north and south. Neaten everything up and make sure that it's all level and even. Wet out this side with soap and water as you did on side one. Now we're going to add some shiny bits to this side. I've chosen viscose as a luster fiber. It doesn't take much. You just need your hands to be really dry or it wants to stick to your fingers. I'm laying out a full layer. It's not all that thick. So some of the wool will show through, but we'll also get lots of squiggly, shiny, bright whiteness. I use the water in the project to absorb into the viscose. After adding the viscose and wetting this side out, I go ahead and give it a few little rubs. And once I've done that, I'll flip it back over and add the viscose to side two. Now we can begin felting our vessel. We start by hand rubbing and notice that we're rubbing towards the middle of the resist at all times. So from the side to the middle, the side to the middle, the bottle to the middle at all times, trying to get the fiber to hug the resist. Do this on each side for about five minutes. Once we've done that, it's time to change our method of felting and we are going to roll. Notice the sequence of rolls. We're doing our traditional rock and roll method, which means we're going to rock and roll it for 25 times and then give it a quarter turn on its axis until we reach 100 rolls. So each roll will include this. As we roll, we're going to favor our shrinkage from side to side first. So do 100 rolls from each side edge of the vessel or rolling it east to west on both the top and the bottom or side A and B. So you're gonna roll it, that would be 400 rolls. Now 
Then we're gonna roll it from south to north or from the bottom of the vessel towards the top of the vessel. And you're going to do that on side A and B. Each of these sets is 100 rock and rolls. Once we've done that, we've really favored the vessel to shrink towards the resist and hug it more tightly. So now we can roll from north to south or from the open end of the vessel towards the base. And you're going to do that 100 times on the top and the bottom or side A and side B. Even with this coarse fiber, the vessel will really start to felt at this point. And once you've done all of the sequence of rolls, and you can reference the handout that we have for you if you like, then we are going to do a pinch test. You can see that we're starting to have a free standing fabric. It's holding to itself. The fibers will tent up. They're not pulling away from each other. And this is a really great sign. Now we can remove our resist. If yours is not at this stage, keep rolling with the resist in, but you can see that our resist is a little bit curled and that's a good sign because it's starting to shrink. The wool is shrinking smaller than the resist was. Now we're going to do at least 100 rock and rolls from the two side edges for a total of 200 rolls. We're still trying to shrink in the width of the vessel. Because we have a, a felt beginning to form, now we want to really continue to shrink and train the vessel into the shape that we want. We've removed it off the resist and you see these little trained edges. There's not a seam. A seam is when the wool has slipped off of the resist, but all of our rolling methods really prevent that from happening. So now we're just gonna give it some rolls right onto our little dowel and further shrink or full this felt that we're working on. At this stage, we're really trying to get the vessel to start to shrink and shape up to the final object that we're going to shape it on. So it's okay to felt a little bit and then pause and try it on your vessel. I will be using the plastic bottle that we started with to create our resist. As I put it on my bottle, it's still a little loose. There's still a little space in there, but look, it's about the right shape and I can start to flatten the bottom into the shape of the bottom of my bottle. I like to squeeze out a bit of the water um, because that is still taking up space in between the fibers and squeezing out a little bit of the water is gonna help those fibers get even close together as we continue agitating. Now we wanna really get down to the business of fulling and that means we're going to further shrink the fibers with agitation. Lots of rolling is my preference. This will keep our fibers really organized and they won't get that bubbly, bumpy look that happens from throwing. We, we're not planning to do any throwing with this shape. Put it on your vessel, shape it, pound it, roll it, rub it. This is the part where we're really getting it to form to our final jar or can or bottle, whatever you've decided to use. When you're happy that the shape is about 90% there, it's time to cut off the excess. Once you cut the excess, all of those fibers are kind of loose and we want to do what's called healing the edge. So bring back in your soap and water and with your fingers, rub those edges so that they're no longer blunt, but they start to taper to a close. And this will give your cut felt a real nice finished edge. At this stage, any agitation with the tools you have is perfect. Notice that I'll use the bubble wrap like a washboard and burnish or rub the fiber on there. Take the material off and roll it again on the dowel. Anything works. You just want to get a pretty nice fit.
Once we're satisfied with the size of our vessel and it feels like it's all holding together, it's time to rinse out all of the soap. While you're cleaning up, soak it in a bowl of water with just a pinch of vinegar in it. After our vessel has been rinsed and soaked in a vinegar bath, then we want to do the final blocking. We've shrunk it a little bit smaller than our bottle now and we're going to stretch it into place. This is perfect. Stretching it a little bit is gonna help us make a nice tight felt and we want to shape it and block it and rub it and let it to sit to dry overnight. Once it's dry, you're really gonna see the beauty and the sheen of that viscose. Wool is not flammable, but it will singe. So if you're wanting to use real candles, then maybe make your wool hurricanes tall enough that you can house a jar and be happy with the final look. So if I were gonna do this, I'd probably want the hurricane to cover the jar all the way, um, but that is really up to you. So if you're gonna use real candles, use a glass insert. The lights we've chosen for this project are very simple. This is just a little tea light that I bought during our Snowmageddon a couple of years ago, so it's battery operated. You can just turn it on and off. It's got kind of a yellow light. I bought a set of these candles on Amazon, and what I like about them is they come with a remote, so you can turn them off and on, and the, the wick kind of moves, so behind the wool it looks like it's flickering. These are some little puck lights and they have a cord. This one has a cord also. The difference is this one comes with an on-off switch and this one has an on-off switch right on the side, but both are great for this little area lights up and will just allow your hurricane to glow. So pick your favorite and get them glowing. I hope you've had fun with this project and we hope you'll make one too. Leave us a comment down below. Let us know your favorite takeaway or what else you'd like to see. And if you make one, please share it in our group, Living Felt Friends on Facebook. Thanks so much for watching. If you're looking for more wet felting over resist videos, check out this one right here or follow the link down below to our wet felting over resist playlist. Mm -hmm.